This time I'm going to be streaming some programming work that I'm doing. Uh, I've been working on a integration between the Svelte. Let me pull that up here. Svelte is a front-end framework. Svelte, the Svelte front-end framework with Django. Um, I don't even... Django project. There we go. Yeah, with Django. Um, Django is a Python-based web framework, and Svelte is an incredible um, uh, JS framework. It's compiled and gives um, really compact bundles, and it's it's excellent. I'm not a JS developer. I'm primarily a Django developer, Python Django. Um, but Svelte it scratches a super a super big itch in the Python or in the uh, in, in my mind. That, that Django um, um, Django is not great at, at front end stuff, right? It's it's sort of flat HTML stuff. I stand in defense of the ugly internet because I love the ugly internet, um, but customers want reactive stuff, so that's where Svelte comes in. And um, what was missing in my mind was a shim between Django and Svelte that lets um, that lets you easily use the frameworks together. So that's what I've been working on lately in my free time. So this is the result of that. And today I'm gonna to be working a little bit with the demo package that is adjacent to this that um, illustrates how Django Svelte works. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got the code base over here. Um, like I said, I'm going to be working on the demo. I've got about an hour and a half here to do some streaming, so uh, let's do it. Um, I didn't really write a write a script for this, so I'm just going to have to remember what the hell it was that I was going to do. Um, so yeah, let's let's remember that. Um, yeah, what I was going to do was to uh, add in another component here. So, actually, let me get the terminal up here and then um, projects uh, um, felt demo. Uh, so let's give me one second here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this project up and uh, show you what we have right now. Look. Oh, yeah, it's because I used make run as the uh, make file right up here. So if we look at the make file. It's really just wrapping some Docker Compose functionality. So I'm just bringing this thing up using the Docker Compose file, which looks like this. So I have two services there, an app and a node container. The node sidecar is what's doing the compilation of the Svelte code into the JS bundle. And the app is Django, um, the Django instance that's serving that. Uh, so when those are both running, uh, we get a yeah we get this thing here uh, some stuff in the Django template or the Django yeah the Django template itself and then here the um, the default um, uh, um, spelt um, screen right the, the sort of hello world for spelt um, so what I want to do is to show how how you would incorporate um, something that's actually reactive here. So for it to be reactive, you'll want to have um, some API endpoints on the back end that are doing something. 
and then the front end element that's reacting or that's re that's uh, 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 interacting with that API endpoint. So let's start on the Django side of things and let's add in a um, an API endpoint. Uh, I like to keep everything sort of sequestered in its own folders. So I make an API folder here and in that I'm going to want to have a URL. So file here, so urls.py. <coughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to need to make a reference. Um, actually, you know, I'm just going to consult with some uh, <coughs> with some former work that I did, some precursor work and just uh, do a little copy pasta job here to make life easy. So rather than having to look up the include thing, just copy pasta, get that going. So, double quotes there, these pedantic and switch all these things around. Um, I'm referencing, instead of Svelted, that was the sort of temporary project name that I was working with. Django spelt demo.api.urls. So I'll be including that. Um, I need to also update my import to grab that include function. Uh, and then fix the space in here so nothing freaks out on me. And then up here in, I'm just going to copy pasta some more stuff before I get into this file. So for our path here, we just want to have a test endpoint. Um, actually, let's do better than that. Let's do um, requires auth and we'll flesh out what that's going to point to a little bit later on. Um, Rather, let's just import all the views. So I don't want to be so specific right now. So views, I'll do a um, requires off view, define as view. And here I can give this thing a name as well. Um, and then I want to also have something that doesn't require auth. Um, this one can really just be a template view. Grab the import here. So this one I want to be publicly available. What am I doing? This is an API endpoint. I can't do template view. But that would be a regular Django thing. View.public. I almost used a regular Django thing in a Django REST framework situation. Um, and I should fix the same here. This is uh, API import views. I haven't created that module yet. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, actually, let's go ahead and get to that right now. I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I did before. Um, being as I've sort of pre-prepared some of this stuff. Whoa. Ah, I need to grab it from up here. I've pre-prepared some of this stuff. Um, so, and there's not actually not a lot going on here. Um, I'm just going to grab all of this 
So I'm just going to save this file again as. Well, I'm going to save it as. Um, demo and JavaScript demo and JavaScript demo and API. And then I'll modify that to suit. So I change these names a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, whenever I wrote this, I just made a, a quick mix in here that does uh, something stupid. It's all it's uh, sort of a Dale Gribbleism. It's good. Um, so for the requires auth view. Oh man, I was close. Requires auth, and I'll keep it as API view so that it's requires auth API view. So it's consistent with what we expect from uh, Django REST framework. And then I'll change this to public. So none of this is, um, and I'll change this over here to API view. So none of this is groundbreaking stuff. The main difference here is that I put a permission class on the API view that requires auth. I'll go ahead and sort of lent this a little bit to make it look a little prettier. Um, and on this one, I didn't put a permission class. Now, I haven't used Django REST framework in this package or in this uh, project yet, so I need to go through some stuff to get it there before this will actually work. Uh, first off, I need to add it to the requirements. So, Django. I'm expecting this thing's going to autocomplete in a minute. Framework, there we go. Um, I'm using the Sublime Text um, requirements.txt plugin to give me syntax highlighting sort of features here. And it's actually really nice. It uh, looks up all the packages from pip that match what you're typing in and um, auto-completes them for you so you can be sure that you've uh, got the right thing. This doesn't look right, though. Um, whenever I did um, the, you know, sort of tell me the latest version, the latest version is 0 0.1.0, so that seems wrong. Um, so let's just go check out the docs, Django REST framework.org probably just that they have a name that I'm not expecting. Uh, installation pip, yeah, no hyphens there. So, um, get rid of these hyphens. And that looks more right, 3.12.2. Um, <clears throat> and then let's follow the rest of the instructions that they give for getting this thing going, so I'm not just shooting from the hip. Uh, we add REST framework to install the apps, no problem. Open up the settings. I like to put that before any of my project stuff. Uh, likewise, I'm going to move Django Svelte up because that's now a third party package according to this repo. Um, REST framework, put it there. So that should get everything running. Once I rebuild the container that I'm running in, that should work OK. Um, yeah, of course I want a browsable API here. Um, but I don't necessarily need that there. Actually, I don't care about REST frameworks logging and logout views. I don't need that for this small demo project. Um, what I do want is the browsable API documentation, uh, which is in. Um, mm -hmm. 
I don't see anything in the docs that immediately points out how to get that right. So I'm just going to look through the um, through the URLs that I had in the starting project. So let me go over the, why I am doing this new project, this demo. Um, I was just sort of proving the concept before, and I um, built the the template tags for doing this integration. I built them right into the Django project uh, instead of having them as a standalone uh, sort of separate code base that's a, a freestanding app that you can find on PyPy. Um, so I'm splitting it out and I'm formalizing the names and all that so that they're a little bit you know, more closely aligned uh, with, with what I want the open source project to be called. Um, so yeah, I don't feel bad borrowing the code from here. Actually, I basically never feel bad about borrowing code from an old project because, you know, we had to figure it out once. Why, why trouble myself figuring it out twice? Um, so I'll just go back to the old project here and we'll get the stuff that we're looking for. Um, I need to disable those notifications. Um, Stand by. Okay. Um. Right, so what I want to be able to have here is the autodocs. Um, so let's just pop that over here. That's just a regular path. Um, I need the schema view because that is what actually generates the docs. And I need all of the Yassie that lets you have that auto generated view of the scheme. And that brings me to the next thing that we need, which is another bit in requirements. I need DRF Yassig in there. So that's yet another swagger generator, um, which uh, there's a, as the name implies, there's several of those that exist out in the world. Um, so I, I basically just picked one and uh, went with that. So DRF Yasig is the name in that package. Let's put that in uh, requirements here. DRF Yasig, Yasig, uh, and then we get the latest version of that. Cool, that should do the trick. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the auth as well. I don't think it's going to come up, but it actually it will come up if we're trying to auth into just the API itself. So we're going to see about authing into the API versus authing into the um, um, <coughs> authing into the Django app uh, itself. Um, but we're going to need some other stuff for this auth to work exactly right. Specifically, we need some some mention of what our settings are. So, let me get rid of some of these. They're cluttering up my view here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so here's the settings for our current project. Um, and there's nothing in here about REST framework because I'm just now adding REST framework. So let's go back to the REST framework docs. Um, quick start here. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's not a quick install guide. We need to go back to their install guide. Installation. So the, the only thing they're calling for here is the permission class. 
Um, so hey, maybe we don't actually need anything for DRF yet. Leave it alone. I'll see how this thing runs. We'll, we'll just start getting a feel for it. Um, so yeah, get rid of those. Now to uh, to see how to see this thing actually getting going. Let's um, let's go ahead and just rebuild our container. So I'm gonna make stop. That stops our instance, and that'll take a second. And then I'm gonna do make build. After make stop is done. And since we changed the requirements.txt, that should trigger a um, should trigger new PyPy packages to be pulled into the container or into the image rather that we're building. So there's DRF proper. And there's DRF yasig. Scroll and paint stuff. It's there. No, it's there. Um, do, do, it's doing all this, all this build. This build here is all, um, it's all from the Docker file. So if you're, if you're not using Docker for your, oh god, I didn't like that. Uh, if you're not using Docker for your dev setups, then I definitely suggest it. It, it means you don't have to worry about uh, doing any operating system requirements in your actual operating system. Okay, so it didn't find a module called REST Framework. It's probably because I misspelled it in some way. Let's go back and look at that. Yeah, of course I did. Needs an underscore there. So that is in our settings and required apps. So a little underscore here, no problem. And then we'll go back and we'll say build again. Looks like it's doing what it wants to do this time. Um, <clears throat> and then if we make run, get everything started up, we ought to be able to navigate directly to our. Um, mm, 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 oh, didn't like it. Ooh. Make target logs, that's a lie. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, it, it was logs yesterday, now it's app logs and node logs, depending on which container you want to look at. So I should have been using app logs. I want to see why Django is complaining. Womp womp. Okay, I left off a, something from my import block. I need to import the permissions from Django REST. So uh, let's go back to our um, views. Wait, what? Jenga URLs. Hmm. Um, hold on, I'm going to pause this for a second. <laughs> <laughs> 